Um, the results of the discussion was um, virtual conf we should increase virtual conferences and webinars that don't require travel and to keep this going even after the pandemic because it has been very convenient from um, people from the west from the rest of the world who are not in Europe to be able to attend these webinars and conferences. Um, something else that came up was a lot of young people want to see advertising of vacancies and grants and financial opportunities, um, not just provided by RLM, but from um, other, associate, uh, um, other industries associated with RLM. Um, and then the other thing was peer-to-peer -peer webinars, seminars, and discussions. Um, because it came up that the existing webinars are mostly top down, whereby an expert on the topic gives the webinar to, let's say, PhD students and postdocs. But we thought it would be very beneficial to encourage peer to peer webinars and seminars as well, which means PhD students and postdocs are presenting to PhD students and postdocs because this encourages um, discussion on a more accessible level. And then the last thing we thought that needed to be highlighted was um, a lot of young RLM members are not aware of what their future in what their future in RLM is going to look like. So we thought it would be very important to kind of map out a career path for someone who wants to be in RLM long term. For example, you can start by joining a TC and then perhaps volunteering to be a reviewer um, for materials and structures or any of the RLM technical letters and then perhaps moving on to um, being requested to join an editorial board. This kind of gives an idea to the young member um, what they need to do now in order to set themselves up for the future. Um, and that is a short summary of our discussion. Thank you very much, Joanita. I'll go to the other session also on young members, Pranoy. Uh I'm going to share my screen and I have to say uh, we discussed at least half the points that Joanita mentioned. So I'm glad to hear that. Thank you to the folks who joined for presenting really very interesting points. Uh, big picture, young members are the future. They should get something from Rylim and they should also give something back. Uh, the Youth Council has attracted very significant interest. In principle, it works with TAC, EAC and DAC. So could is there a consideration of making the youth council into a standing committee or maybe something even higher up? You could have uh, youth council members act as liaisons in TAC, EAC, and DAC, or vice versa, to, uh, so that information exchanged through these committees is not only via email. Uh, at present, to the best of my knowledge, only senior members can propose a chair a TC. So we could consider young members being able to propose or chair a TC as needed. And in this process, if they could always be mentored by uh, senior members. Rylam could provide a best PhD student presentation award apart from all the other uh, awards that it presents, which acts as motivation for PhD students. This could be done, for example, in a separate PhD student session if needed. Uh, the number of PhD grants could be increased, or if that is seen as reducing the privilege of said grants, we could provide honorary mentions, which again looks nice because people win something. And in those honorary mentions, maybe you only pay registration fee for the conference, uh, but not the other monetary benefits. Uh, the discussion that comes up during the rock talk is extremely interesting, but this is not, or it appears to be not posted on YouTube. So RYC members could bring up some of these aspects for further consideration in their meetings. Uh, as Joanita also mentioned, there seems to be a lot of interest in having webinars from PhD students and postdocs. This could also be in local languages, and these will help PhD students prepare for conferences, especially if senior RILEM members could attend and provide feedback on these webinars. And maybe you could do something like a RILEM Youth Month or something like that to really encourage these events. In principle, there are some PhD students who are the, over the age of 35. If on a case-by-case -case basis, they could be considered as young members or pay the young member rate, it might help them, but uh, it, this could already be being considered. Uh, regional conferences, uh, if RILEM could co-sponsor some of these, including some in 
non-English. Uh, these could be conferences, events, webinars, and many of them could be virtual. These could be really a great way to attract uh, newer members. These could be coordinated by regional uh, conveners, I'm sorry. And uh, it appears that EAC and TAC are already considering these. Uh, we could, in principle, also aim some of these events at undergraduates and not at PhD students. This is, in some sense, forward-looking for both research and industry. And in one sense, we attract the even younger members, so as to say. Uh, the other thing that was brought up, which uh, a lot of folks really were interested in, is help with uh, jobs or postdoc positions, et cetera, uh, or industry positions. And TC chairs could do this. This could be done on social media, industry, or you could even develop a central platform to do this. And this would really present a large incentive for folks to, to join and remain in Rylem. Uh, Rylem could also, in principle, consider providing small amounts of seed funding for certain important projects. Uh, is there any meaning in having non-technical or informal or social media committees or even something like a pre-TC committee? Uh, <laughs> For those who are overwhelmed by joining TCs, we could have affiliate or learning TC members who get mentored by the chair or someone else. Chairs could also post tasks or jobs for such members. Uh, mentorship was brought up. Senior members could act as members, mentors for junior members. This could be a one is to one thing as in a one-on-one -on -one mentorship, but it could also be one senior member providing advice to 10 different members. Either way, limited to about five hours a year, people are very busy, they understand that. Uh, social media, apparently Instagram is very popular and ResearchGate is very popular for research. So these are two other social media outlets that uh, RYC is looking at. We, maybe we could have a social media committee or the youth council could take the lead on social media. Big picture, uh, the topics that are of interest, sustainability, environment, resilience, big data, AI. So ILM should really uh, take a look at some of these topics if it's not already doing so. And TCs on some of these topics might be of a lot of interest. In speaking of big data and AI, if we can generate a lot of data from these TCs, if we can keep it open and have them shared, then others could use it to develop models, et cetera, and do a lot more with that data. Uh, focusing on interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary research could become extremely crucial uh, in the near future. And uh, some state that for research to really, if it has meaning and value to society, then it is extremely attractive. So these considerations should be taken into account. This was very quick. I'll obviously email all the details to, to uh, you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pranoy and Joanita. I think uh, you brought out a lot of important points. I've uh, tried to uh, make notes and see what I could summarize later. But please send me, uh, send us an email with all the points, then it'll be easier than, uh, than depending on our memory. So next I'll go to the uh, session on industry. Uh, Nicholas, would you like me to continue or do you want to take over? Well, you're doing it very well, Avima. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas. So I go to Ishan. So Ishan, you have about 10 minutes to summarize uh, how we can do better with industry. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And uh, just to make sure that I, I do this first, I'd really like to acknowledge everyone who participated in this session. It was very lively discussion. We had excellent uh, group providing a lot of feedback and also special thanks to Pascal, who served as the reporter for this group to capture all of those conversations. So in the end, we came up with this list of 10 that you see here and uh, just trying to do it in about uh, eight or nine minutes here I'll, I'll go through these quickly uh, but we have quite 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 more details available that we'll be able to uh, send uh, right after this to uh, to 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 all the uh, all the members uh, Ravindra and and, and uh, Nicola and, and Judith and so on um, so when we started, we started with some very simple points that you see here that, that we are looking at, but really what, what it boiled down to is these 10 items and, and we'll send you the email, but uh, really starting with identifying what is really the points of context between Rylum and industry, right? So and that could be looked in two different ways. Uh, we all agree that Rylum recommendations is probably one of the biggest reason why 
industry is usually interested in participating in Rylum and, 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 and working with Rylum. Uh, but also there are aspects associated with continuing education opportunities for industry, uh, as well as uh, uh, trying to make sure that the voluntary contribution aspect of Rylum continues to stay clear. Um, we have also talked about objectives of industry involvement, but more or less they, they superimpose with, with each other. You could look at as point of context or as objectives. And I'm not going to have enough time to talk a lot about solutions in, in these uh, 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 eight or nine minutes, but we have identified pathways that will be in the report that we will be sending to you. Societal needs. This is what the group very strongly felt, uh, that this is an opportunity for Rylum to really engage industry uh, to the point where it was also mentioned multiple times that the term technology transfer is obso almost obsolete now. That's something that is already well understood. Uh, the idea is that if Rylum TCs continue to look at where the societal needs are, uh, that will automatically attract industry. And it, it's, it's good because it, well, it fits very well with what Daniela presented this morning with theme of sustainability to be embedded everywhere throughout Rylum. So uh, we strongly felt that uh, to better engage industry, TC should, should uh, try to, uh, to, to look a little bit more at societal needs and, and that might form the, the, the pathway to uh, have better weaving between industry and, and Rylum. Industry involvement at all phases of Rylum. Uh, the group strongly felt that if we have more buy-in or more ownership from industry, uh, and, and that can be accomplished if industry had chance to uh, look at TC proposals and provide some of their uh, feedback, not necessarily as in yes or no, but as in how can we take outcomes of this proposal and implement better, or how can we provide feedback, constructive criticism to improve those TC proposals. Uh, and at the same time, uh, maybe even require something like technical readiness level for proposals as well as RILAM recommendations, uh, which would be a specific field that's geared towards applicability. Now, we, we, we want to be clear in saying that we are not asking that TC proposal may be rejected for this reason. All we are saying is, is, is better job at identifying this and also helping industry have more ownership in Rylum's work. Uh, uh, Star in Nutshell is an excellent uh, uh, effort that Rylum has started. I think that should be continued. That's what committee felt or, or the group felt because that allows to communicate to industry in a relevant way. Regional efforts. We felt that, that uh, and this, some of this was touched in the young members group as well. I, I think there is need for a little bit better uh, regionalization efforts where members of TCs, TAC, DAC can, can reach out to their regional entities or associations or bodies to get better involvement of these groups uh, within Rylum. Uh, and, and one effort could be dissemination efforts uh, for workshops or short courses or also some of our outcomes in regional or native languages. So we felt that that could, that could help as well. Industrial Advisory Board, uh, there's a concept as I learned today, uh, was somehow present in something called Council of Directors. The idea here is to have a body that's not necessarily external body, it's composed of existing or future RILAM members. And, and, and the role of this body is advisory, not governing. So that's a very clear point. So this body would not necessarily say that this outcome or this RILAM recommendation is not good or good. Uh, the whole role of this body is to provide feedback, to look at the recommendations and maybe even provide things like, these could be additional steps that can be done to better implement this RILAM recommendation into practice or same at the time of TC proposal. And we also feel that it would be good to highlight this body, maybe have a dedicated session at Rylum Week, where you have maybe four or five people from this group come and talk about what are the current research needs of their respective industries and how Rylum activities can fulfill those, those needs. Rules for industry involvement, this came up a few times. Uh, this is something that, that, that would help. 
uh, more so our industry than than Rylum if if there are certain clear rules established as to what is allowed, what is not allowed, what is considered commercial activity versus not. Uh, we understand that the responsibility lies with TC chair and deputy chair with convener to serve as an overseeing role, but also industrial advisory board can help as well. And especially if there are things like uh, uh, to have some kind of disclaimer to not share competition sensitive information, uh, members who represent industry in our group felt that that would help convince their companies to be more proactive in, in Rylum. Impact tracking and success stories, I lumped them to put together, but uh, I won't bore you too much because I know with success stories, we are doing great job with uh, RIM and, and Daniela's uh, uh, outreach activities. Uh, but we also felt that tracking of students who have participated in RILEM, especially as they translate from being student to working for industry could be a great way uh, to track success. Uh, and, and another idea could be for asking TCs to also prepare some kind of uh, memo or, uh, or, or some kind of presentation, some document that, that indicates how their activities are, 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 are translating into practice at the end of TC life. Dissemination strategies, uh, uh, I think there's certain things that came up. We don't necessarily have solution for these, but especially things like GDPR or privacy concerns that, that may have issues. Uh, RILEM recommendations keep on coming up. I think one idea could be even to have within RILEM recommendation a specific section that could be discussing about industrial applications. Uh, and then uh, we already talked about courses with, with regional options. And then lastly, this DAC map, uh, and luckily we had two members of DAC in, in the group, uh, but maybe a map that could uh, be, be taken by DAC that focuses on targeted recruitment efforts. Uh, so it's really a map that looks at what other industrial or what all industrial organization or professional societies are out there that, that could be engaged to improve industry objectives. So that's a lot to cover in short amount of time, uh, but again, you'll get, get detailed information from us. Uh, we, we try to type as much as possible during the discussion. And those are the uh, really the, the 10 things that, that, that we had discussed during uh, uh, today's workshop session. Thank you very much, Ishan. I, it looks like a lot of ideas have come. We'll have to have the standing committees now follow up on many of these. Yep. Thank so you. If you, can, if you can stop yeah. sharing, I'll go to the session on dissemination. Jeanette. Yep. Let's try me see if I can share my screen. You should be able to. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, let me see. That has not gone right. No, it's I'll try not again. I try again. Yeah. Uh, yes. Share. That's not what I want to share. No. Here it is. So in the strategy session of, can you see it now? We can see it. It'll be oh, uh, right. better cool. if you can go to full screen mode. Is this not full? No, I don't know. Can I? Let me see. Yeah. You are uh, all in you, front you, of it. Yeah, you can click on the icon. That, yeah. But you're on, in front but of it. I have to move you. I could do it like this. Yeah, yeah. That should okay. work. Oh, cool. So in the um, dissemination conclusions, um, what we concluded mainly was that the RILEM dissemination was really up to date and quite healthy. Um, the social media platforms, they currently Jeanette, open. Jeanette, uh, sorry to bother you, but we are seeing the presenter view. So oh, you have, only so you have me. to... You have to click on the three dots and then say that you uh, to not show the present view. Yeah. Uh, I, I present, present interview. interview. Yes. All right. Sorry. 
So the lesson learned was, um, no, I don't see it, is that the Rylan dissemination is up to date and quite healthy. So social platforms and media, they're really up to date and they're actually monitored by the Rylan itself to see uh, if they're really useful and how much uh, um, they contribute to um, getting the Rylan known uh, in the world. Also the webinars and the YouTube video collection is, is growing quite well. And um, what the Rylam also does is follow other websites uh, to pick up new ideas and new uh, channels and see if there's anything that's also interesting for the Rylam. Uh, amongst other, it was mentioned that the ACI website is uh, regularly checked for new, uh, new things. And of course, the Rylam is of the ACI is, uh, is much larger than the uh, Rylam, but as far as possible, um, yeah, it's a good source of information. Um, the other thing that was mentioned was that um, the Rylam information really stands for quality information. And it was felt among the panel uh, uh, members that this quality standard should really be preserved. The, the world is uh, uh, engrossed in uh, all kinds of information, but it's very hard to find uh, good quality information that can help you further. Um, that concluding everything, that does not mean that um, there is that the uh, panelists did not have any information on how uh, the dissemination could be uh, maybe strengthened a bit further. And so we collected some ideas and the one was uh, uh, grouped was about learning. And it was felt that an online dictionary or glossary would be handy to help um, all the Rylan members to develop the same uh, language. And also it may help to have, in addition to the definition in English, also some keywords translators in other languages. And I think this is also uh, in line with uh, the other sessions that felt that SOAP site would be helpful to have also some, um, some lectures in, uh, in the local languages. Um, it was also felt that sometimes the technical committees, because they don't uh, give their overview presentation so often, uh, were only um, introduced too late in their um, history. So it was uh, maybe a good idea to have the seminars already including some technical committees, especially at the start, or yeah, have in some way a better connection between the seminars and the technical committees, also for the PhDs, because it's very good to get up to date uh, on the latest research. Um, they may give them focus to their research and an opportunity to join earlier and also to meet the specialist on the topic. So that also may be really nice. It, thirdly, it was uh, felt that a more focused and dedicated shorter seminars would also be nice. And that could be introduced very quickly by sending an email with a link, uh, but also later on to have them a review possibility in Facebook and YouTube. Uh, it would be nice to have a list of upcoming or uh, series of topics and then decide on them which to continue by popular vote. So we always have the latest topics of interest for anybody uh, there to decide. And finally, it was felt especially, well, mostly by everybody not uh, in uh, uh, permanently working in the, uh, on the universities that the technical committees were running quite long. Five to seven years means that most of the PhDs and postdocs uh, have no opportunity to see the start and the finish of the uh, technical committees. And this also means for, uh, for instance, for industry, that the running time is, is really long for introducing new concepts and so on. And that meant, especially for the stars, that also uh, stars that are just available after five to seven years and not really stars anymore. So it might be possible to have them quicker and faster uh, published even within a TC that may be running longer. Um, concerning the news, um, the information um, that's we receiving from the Rylam can be sometimes quite overwhelming. And it is for everybody personally what they favor. Some favor um, just emails, some favor nothing at all. They check it on the website themselves. Um, so we thought it might be a good idea to have the information more uh, dedicated or personalized on maybe 
uh, a personalized uh, uh, page uh, on, the, on the Ryland website where you can tick on and off the information you would like to receive. Because nowadays the information we get from all directions can be just too much. And some people remarked that they were not even reading it anymore, just putting it in the, in the uh, delay box. Um, then short information bus would, would be very nice. So have infographics or flash videos or animations um, for especially complex uh, topics. Sometimes really uh, complex topics yeah, can be really make simple and uh, quickly digestible. And the nice thing about that is that can afterwards all easily streamed on any social media. And the other thing is that we felt that even though yeah, there's a lot of put effort in both writing and uh, making videos, et cetera, but people process information differently. So we really feel that um, yeah, there will be a place for all these kinds of channels and dissemination uh, uh, platforms that YLAM already has. And the one thing we, we felt maybe a bit lacking was um, having really the doing part. So exercises, videos, or how to do and deal with things. But we realized it takes a lot of time to prepare those. Um, then the final conclusion on uh, connecting between the Ryland members. Well, we all felt there's nothing beat personal meetings and we all love that, um, but uh, it's not always possible and also uh, very convenient and, and, and yeah, time efficient to have these kind of internet meetings going on. Um, but still, um, we see sometimes that the Rylam events uh, have yeah, so many people coming in that it's really difficult to find a cost-effective platform in doing so where you can have sufficient, let's say, breakout rooms and stuff like that. So there's always a balance uh, between cost and uh, yeah, the opportunity to to have more interaction between people. Um, also, it may be, uh, it, it's a possibility to have virtual coffee rooms or lunch meetings um, that are separated from the Rylam events as well. It's a nice way to get um, your network going within Rylam. Um, you can dedicate it to a round uh, coffee uh, uh, topic or something like that, but it gives you an opportunity to meet people also a little bit more informal and maybe the, um, yeah, the barrier is not so high as by uh, sending an email to somebody that you don't, do not know. Um, we also find that uh, connecting the, uh, the Rylan uh, research is mostly better with the industry. And actually, uh, somebody uh, made a suggestion that the ACI have already set up such a very strong link that they're most yeah, strongly involved in, uh, uh, with the industry. So it may be a good idea to have a look at how they are doing it and if there's any, anything that we can copy from them. And also, it's, it's newly introduced and it still has to be set up. We realize that, but we have uh, on the Rylan website the frequently asked questions. Um, it would be really nice to add already some questions there, especially on uh, where to find information that was coming from uh, uh, the industry specifically. And so they had problems on finding the right information on the website and also on how to publish, et cetera. And this information is available and it's sent around uh, before the start of TC, et cetera. But by having them also in the frequently uh, ask question. It's for a lot of people. It's a quick way of uh, uh, looking up information. So that was it. Thank you very much. I stop sharing. Thank you. So I think a lot of ideas have come up. We see uh, overlapping ideas, which makes it more interesting. That means more people, more groups have been thinking about it. That's really great. So we'll go on to online digital tools. Again, something related with the previous topic. Armel, yes. Now you're on mute. 
sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Nkululeko. She was a very nice reporter. And uh, with her, we, uh, we deal on online digital tools with uh, four to five participants, and Judith uh, added. So, Uh, we are trying to um, uh, resume uh, the discussion in this slide. So first of all, we have um, um, a, lo a large discussion about uh, how we can uh, bring young and distant members to RILEM and uh, how uh, digital tools can uh, help us to do this. So uh, free items. Uh, during the meetings, some of them uh, are face-to-face -face, uh, meetings, and uh, it's uh, very uh, nice to have the possibility and the opportunity to uh, have hybrid meetings for uh, young people and distant members that cannot travel. So it's a very nice uh, way to encourage uh, them to, to participate. And also, we, we were um, talking a lot about uh, videos, how we can uh, improve uh, the realm no knowledge with videos, uh, meaning that uh, uh, sharing um, videos on special and specific experiments, uh, videos uh, um, on spe specific uh, thematic or uh, specific theses. So we think that it, it could be a good option for all these uh, members uh, to, 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 to get the knowledge, uh, specifically uh, maybe um, young members or members that doesn't have uh, this type of knowledge on, on this kind of experimental uh, tool, for instance. So we, we talk also um, on the fact that uh, it exists nowadays uh, remote virtual labs. So it could be a very nice uh, idea to, uh, to uh, have this kind of uh, tools uh, by means of, uh, of the website. Um, regarding uh, alternative ways to communicate, so uh, RELM uh, application exists on smartphone. Actually, uh, we didn't. We are not using this uh, so much, or in the group, in the, the participant who discuss on this, and uh, we said how we can uh, promote uh, this and then improve uh, this uh, special uh, app application. One of the participants mentioned that it would be nice to have a, um, a kind of alerts or on a specific topics on a, a smartphone. Some of them uh, not, are not uh, disagree on that, but uh, why not? It could be uh, one thing for people who would like to, um, to have uh, uh, information on a specific topic and uh, it, it would be very nice. And um, to share um, different things, we spoke about uh, the fact that in, inside the RALEM personal website, uh, uh, we could add uh, in the menu uh, uh, a forum menu where uh, each member could share uh, different information uh, such as uh, opportunities uh, uh, to, uh, to respond to a, a call, a funding call, or opportunities to collaborate on one topic, uh, a place, a forum place where people uh, can uh, share knowledge between TCs or inside the TCs. The third point is, was uh, more specifically about uh, the RALEM uh, website visibility itself. Um, if you type uh, your name on Google, for instance, you cannot see your name link to RILEM. So we were talking about this. And it seems to us that the search engine optimization has to be improved. Uh, so that uh, if uh, uh, one people try to see information about one people, it can be connected to RILEM, or if somebody wants to have knowledge on one topic, somehow in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the search engine, uh, RILEM uh, could appear and TCs uh, could appear also. So we, we, we talk about this. We also uh, talk in the same um, things uh, about uh, 
how we could improve the random number profiles. And it seems to us that uh, the keywords, the TC keywords, uh, could be uh, the, the, a work can be done on the TC keywords, and automatically each members of this TC could have the same keywords. It means that if an internet uh, is looking for, uh, let's say, concrete, it it will uh, it will appear that uh, Rylem uh, has a different uh, type of TC on concrete or asphalt or whatever. Um, uh, TC uh, uh, title there is, and in with this also we could have uh, for uh, these uh, keywords will be automatically uh, uh, connected to uh, each member or members of these TCs. Uh, in the same way for uh, the random member profiles, it seems to us that it could be also. Uh, an opportunity for each one of the members to have uh, a link, not only with a uh, LinkedIn, for instance, but also for a link to a scientific uh, platform, such as a research gate. Uh, some, some of us uh, pronounce research gates because in this kind of uh, platform, you can have uh, specific uh, topics and specific groups. So it could be nice to link uh, all of this, but it can be also other scientific platforms. Um, the, the most important things is that this scientific uh, platform um, must be uh, secure. Um, regarding sharing and editing uh, documents uh, as a TC members, it was not so easy uh, for us to, uh, to understand why we are not using so much this. One of the idea is that uh, uh, for this moment, only uh, TC share can uh, put some documents for in his own uh, TC and uh, the TC members need um, uh, um, a deposit, uh, sorry, repository uh, place where everyone can put all the old documents. And uh, we, we were um, uh, asking ourselves if uh, Rylem can provide software for editing uh, docs and uh, um, can have uh, online security uh, discussions uh, to share on, uh, the discussions and the documents. So it's one uh, idea we, we have uh, in order um, to, um, to work with the Rallyam website and not the Google uh, Drive, for instance, if we want to, to, to use, if we want to use uh, the Rallyam website. And the last um, idea we, we had it's actually, uh, we, we will not agree, uh, all of us, uh, about this. So perhaps uh, the DAC uh, will, uh, will uh, have to, uh, to work uh, on, on that um, and look uh, about this. It, it was, um, um, is, is it possible in, into uh, our private Realm uh, uh, website to have links to uh, funding calls? And uh, I think it's more or less uh, politics. So maybe uh, it's uh, something we will have uh, to all um, think about this, uh, how we can use Rylem to also post information for this kind of uh, funding call. It's not so easy for, for each part of the world, but uh, if there is a need, uh, maybe uh, it could be a good idea or, or maybe not. So that's why we were talking about a forum place, something very uh, free uh, to, to begin uh, this kind of uh, sharing uh, ideas. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll go on to the very important session on Rylem values or the workshop on the discussion on Rylem values. 
uh, I'll request Enrico to. Yes, yeah, thank you. On. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Yes, great. So. I was the moderator of this uh, um, session together with Wolfram Schmidt. So we prepared this presentation together and it was uh, a quite challenging and uh, philosophical in nature session. So we started asking ourselves whether and why should Rylem as a scientific association have uh, values that are not only scientific, but also let's say ethical in nature. And the answer to this question was, yes, we do need the values and those values, these values are necessary to run the association and basically to have the basis for decision making today and also in the future because um, some I mean, new problems that are unexpected now may um, come out in the future. So if we have values rather than strict uh, rules, we can uh, relate to those values to make decisions again in the future also to uh, let's say novel problems and these values are also important for our membership for our members to uh, answer the question why should I uh, be part of Rallying because I recognize myself in these values so um, we try to categorize those values in three into three different categories so scientific values which are maybe the most immediate one for a scientific society uh, like Rylem, but also societal values and values that are related to our own organization and membership. So as also already reported explicitly in our statute, so uh, scientific values include uh, the scientific excellence um, of, that Rylem is promoting and also all the ethical principle that are the base of, let's say, uh, the scientific work and the scientific community also out of um, Rile. Then Rilem tries to promote personal uh, scientific careers of, um, let's say, excellent people and tries to promote uh, the access uh, to, the open access to knowledge, to scientific knowledge that Rilem itself is producing. As for societal values, so we meant uh, uh, the outreach activity to the society as a whole and also to industry. So the overall idea is that we try to um, create and share knowledge to build a better world. So when Rylem was created right afterward, this was mostly intended as a cooperation to rebuild uh, the destroyed world today. This is more intended as um, cooperation to uh, fight the challenges that we are facing. So related to the environment, to the health of constructions and so on. This uh, requires that we all are aware that technology and construction have an impact on to society. And um, so starting in this, um, under this, big frame of societal values, the uh, importance of recognizing diversity came out, which is also, let's say, a few rouge that comes out also for the other topics that we um, address the, later in the discussion. As for the values that are related to our own organization and membership, so, um, inclusiveness, the participat participative nature of Ryland uh, were highlighted as um, among the most important um, topics because we started our discussion uh, addressing the democratic nature of Ryland, but then the emphasis was put more on the uh, permeability of Ryland, meaning uh, the possibility for everyone to participate and to have their um, voice be heard in the Rylem General Council in the end. So um, in the end, we um, realized that this kind of um, ability for everyone to participate is already ensured by the fact that Rylem has a bottom-up -up, bottom uh, approach so everyone can pose a question on a table and this can be discussed. And on the other hand, the um, 
possible uh, risk of overconcentration of power, meaning that important decision could be taken by a single person. It's prevented by the structure that uh, Rylam already had. So the fact that, for instance, presidency is composed of three different people already ensures that this kind of overconcentration of power cannot take place. However, even though we um, agree that these um, important values and aspects are already part of uh, Rylam DNA, perhaps we, um, we came up with the suggestion that maybe it, the communication of this structure and how these values are already implemented in Rylam could be maybe enhanced. So um, for instance, by um, sending um, <laughs> Uh, reminders by the mailing list, which was already a hot topic rather than by improving the website. But anyways, to communicate more how these important values are already present and implemented and addressed in uh, Ryle. Then relating to this point, we moved on discussing uh, what are uh, um, the purpose and the goals of Rylem, which are already, um, which are discuss and are the fundamental points of Rylem statues and also are reported in the uh, Rylem website in a more, uh, um, in a longer way, let's say. So we thought that it could be uh, worthy to emphasize, so to slightly revise some points to emphasize how uh, Rylem commits to provide open uh, access to knowledge, which means free, but also, let's say, open in a more general um, understanding. And uh, um, we also um, underline the importance of uh, recognizing how interdisciplinarity and multidisciplinarity, multidisciplinarity are important nowadays. And at the same time, we uh, identified some items, some aspects that would need to be um, stressed uh, more clearly, especially among the worldwide uh, goals uh, of Rylem that are reported, for instance, in the website. So um, we thought that uh, stressing how Rylem um, identifies equality and diversity as some of its founding values is important. And also because, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of um, consequences come from recognizing this as funding uh, elements. And then among the worldwide goals that I mentioned earlier that I reported on the website, we thought that it could be uh, useful to categorize them into a few groups also to make um, the say the list of these goals more accessible and more appealing to everyone. And uh, an important point was that at um, the present form, the industry and the importance that Rylem reaches out to industry and collaborate with industry is not explicitly uh, reported, neither in the, um, let's say, more general uh, goals that are expressed in the uh, statue, but also, again, on these worldwide goals uh, uh, reported in the website. So um, our discussion then moved to uh, gender balance, but we soon realized that this uh, fell into a more general topic of how Ryland deals with diversity. So gender is only one aspect of um, the association or the society in general being um, dealing equally to all um, diverse groups. So gender, but also cultural origin, which might, um, which is related to the uh, region, uh, to the region of provenance of Rylan members. And also another aspect would be age, which is already um, being dealt with um, by creating the Rylan Youth uh, uh, Council. So these are all aspects that fall within uh, the uh, diversity uh, topic. So for the, all these topics, um, the discussion brought out that our um, terms of reference to assess uh, whether Rylem is doing 
well, for instance, in terms of gender, but the same applies also uh, for the region of provenance of members and so on, is to relate uh, to uh, the actual Ryland membership. So if uh, uh, at the moment the Ryland membership is composed of about 30% um, female and 70% men, so to evaluate whether uh, the leading roles in RILEM are uh, equally distributed, let's say, and there's no underrepresentation of a specific gender or a specific region, we should relate to this um, situation, let's say. So the distribution of RILEM membership, whereas um, trying to move to a 50-50 situation would be out of the scope of RILEM because this would need to uh, address um, levels that are um, before, um, let's say, for instance, master students or university students and so on. So um, moment in their career uh, before RILEM is actually um, relevant or before people can um, join RILEM and so on. So the idea is to, uh, let's say, stick to what is actually um, the topic, the specific target of RILEM, meaning uh, researchers, people with a PhD and so on. So, but generally speaking, the idea is that the value that RILEM should um, communicate is that everyone is welcome and is treated equally independent of their um, possible belonging to a diverse group in terms of gender, cultural origin, age, and so on. And then again, to address these um, points, uh, the fact that um, excellence should be the driving force, uh, for instance, was um, regarded, was agreed to come first, uh, um, to be preferable over imposing quotes. Uh, so let's say to um, stick with um, specific numbers of uh, goals, uh, let's say, I don't know, 50-50 uh, or 30-70 uh, target in terms of um, roles. Uh, uh, within the association because these quotes would prevent excellence to be recognized or excellence, recognition of excellence should be the driving force. Again, in terms of recognizing uh, diversity and especially dealing equally with all the uh, members. So uh, the aspect of the membership fees was uh, evaluated and in the end, it was uh, recognized that some, although the um, membership fees have been recently revised, still there is some inequalities in terms of either the young uh, membership fee or the uh, senior membership fee, especially if uh, as long as Africa is concerned, because in spite of the reduction based on the uh, GDP, for some specific countries still uh, the amount, uh, the reduce the fee is uh, much, um, has a very high impact uh, on people's lives. So the burden is higher than it would be in Europe, for instance, even if uh, um, recalculation based on the GDP is um, performed. Uh, then a few other items were raised. So for instance, why do retired members have to pay um, a fee because these people uh, are already retired, meaning they need, would need to uh, pay the fee by their own pocket rather than being sponsored by, reimbursed by an institution. And another point that was raised is that um, if senior members cannot, actually, if senior faculty cannot be, cannot afford being members of RILEM because of the um, senior fee, uh, this could prevent younger um, people to become um, young members in spite of the discounted rate because not having, let's say, a supervisor that can join the um, the association may be an obstacle for uh, these young people uh, to become members. So this could also be um, addressed. Finally, and also again, related to the other topics and, and the, again, the issue of diversity. So also the opportunity or the need of having also different languages or so languages 
other than English being used and considered within the association was discussed. And uh, um, this is actually a very current topic because today, uh, tomorrow, uh, TAC is going, so the Technical Activities Committee is going to discuss uh, um, the idea, which was also discussed in the past, of having um, subgroups of several, some TCs, but also uh, some educational courses uh, held not in English, but in regional languages, which on the one hand could um, help participation, outreach uh, uh, to various subjects and so on. But on the other hand, uh, still uh, we need to ensure the quality and the scientific uh, excellence of these activities. So uh, English would be anyways uh, um, needed, at least for the offic official communication and for report uh, reporting of these um, groups of these activities to Riley. So this was that what we discussed, I hope I didn't take too much time and I was not too worried. Thank you very much, Enrico. Thank you. So we go to the last topic, DAC and presidency. Alexandra, please. Yes, it's not Alexandro, it's Barbara, but um, it's, okay, it's all the same. Um, it's the, the last topic, it was um, the moderator was Alexandra and I'm supposed to report if I manage. Um, the first thing we did, we had another look on the SWOT analysis you presented in the morning and basically tried to update it. And one of the thing is that things that were weaknesses now move to strength. So we, 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 we realized that uh, our, or the violence ability on social media, on internal communication, and also on the follow-up of, of decision, this all has improved tremendously over the last 10 years. And uh, we also think one of the strengths by now is the multicultural approach, even though Yes, sure, there's still more way to go, but it's, we, 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 we thought it's, uh, it's one of the strengths of, um, of Wylam by now. Uh, one of the weaknesses we have added is the relatively low participation of North, Latin America, Africa, and Oce Oceania. Maybe this is related to the impression that we are a European association which is not true, but it's how we are perceived in many places. On the opportunities, it's also, this has been mentioned several times already before, it's maybe we should make, or we have the opportunity to, to, um, to better communicate recommendations to practice for best outreach also to industry. We could attract more industrial members, maybe also back more actively involve them into TCs and things like that. But on the other hand, we also had discussion that we are very clear that Rylam is more an academic than an industrial organization and that this also is the way it should remain. Uh, on the opportunities, we have now a lot of online meeting webinars, which are enabled to, to gather a, a large audience, in, part, in particular, for instance, the Rock Talk seminars, which are, we think, a very important way to, to, to outreach. And the Global Consensus Initiative is also an opportunity to better interact, not only with industry, but also with other associations and an opportunity would also be to, to strengthen the link with other organizations which are somehow similar, but also enough similar, so it makes sense, dissimilar, so it makes sense to collaborate. And naturally, the, the last opportunity we put here, increasingly involve young peoples. We removed some of the old threats 
And uh, this is a very actual threat. We have too many online events and not enough in-person meetings, but I'm sure this will um, be not, or we all hope this will be soon stopped to be a threat. Um, then we move to other topics and one was how do we continue with the implementation of the strategic plan after 2022? We had the implementation manager the last three, three years. We all agreed it was a great experience. It also changed greatly Wylam or how Wylam communicated with the outside. And based on the discussion we had, we would suggest that this should be continued a little bit more if possible. It was also the, 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 the combination of the technical background and of, of Daniela, our um, Weilem implementation manager, enabled a very good link between the research and the technical aspect and the secretariat. The question which we want to put forward to, to, to Weilem is uh, whether there's a need to update the job profile. It's also the question, and this is not on us to decide, but on, on the Weilem office on what they think is doable in terms of permanent position or consultancy position. And naturally, there's all this question about the budget. But from our perspective, it was a very good initiative and some follow up should would seems to be important. A further point we raised is also we enjoyed the strategy meeting and we agreed that um, such an uh, that maybe in, I don't know, in five or 10 years, another one should be made again, because I think it's, a, it's an important way to, to exchange knowledge or wishes or impressions with, with all Rylan members. And then we thought about how, how this can be translated. And I think it's already how it's done at the moment. We report it and then it carries on via the presidents probably to the bureau. And then maybe if the ideas are good, it will come back to the general council. We also spoke about the democratic process. Do we have enough democracy? And basically the outcome was, yes, we think we have enough democracy. We, it seems clear and transparent. It seems efficient the way it is at the moment. There are some non-written rules like alternate European, non-European president, also to, to try to get the role of, of females more active. And the only thing we might could imagine that could be improved is to involve more violence at some step steps in the process, each in the, nom the nomination committee could ask the Weilem members to propose names for presidency or, or other important jobs. But else, the, the overall agreement was it works well how it is. There's no need to, 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 to change anything. Uh, we also asked the same thing about the decision-making process. And again, Everybody seemed to be happy. There was great pro it was felt that great progress has been made in the last 15 years. And if you it was felt that uh, if you wanted to be involved, you could be involved. If not, it was working very well. And as, a, as I said above, maybe more participation for nomination, but we didn't feel it would be necessary for strategic decision because this involves a lot of knowledge and discussion. Uh, Post-COVID implication, what was one of the good things on COVID, we learned that we can do a lot of online meetings, which has a lot of advantage, in particular for the technical meetings, because this works very well. However, we wanted to stress that it's important to have also eventually again in-person meeting, maybe more for, for longer meetings like two island weeks or so, where we all look forward to participate again. There was some suggestion that we also could focus on technical aspects related to health issues. If somebody is interested in that, like ven ventilation, building physics, 
and all this uh, um, online session actually also put a lot of challenges on the secretariat of, of YLM to, to learn all this um, new meetings to organize it and so and maybe it also would be eventually a, an option to provide them some more tri training options to, to improve their skills. We, and then we come to the last point, what do else do we focus during this decade? And one thing that jumps up very much is the big social social societal challenges. It's basically how does Wylam more proactively contributes to what environmental or health challenges. And it's naturally all this uh, uh, initiative against to make a more environmental friendly, less CO2 construction industry. And one option where Wylam could contribute this is maybe as a first step to make a Wylam strategic workshop focus on environmental challenges, uh, also build consensus and, and identify important topics for interface with other organization, FIP, ISAP, and others in joint forums. And if we come to the level of the technical committees, it also could be an option that we ask or encourage the technical committees to consider environmental aspects, uh, like energy transition, low CO2, natural resources, and so on, to be among the aims of, of the TC. And the last point we discussed was ad additional uh, teaching on educational aspects. And we felt it's very important that Wylam continues its efforts towards teaching and educational aspects. And I think we have a great record in doing that. Also, there was the discussion to introduce courses in regional languages, for instance, Spanish or Chinese or whatever. And this was a suggestion of Karen on the creation of a platform for available online courses. A lot of these online courses are already made by, by Wylam, but there's also from different parts, courses for, is, for instance on corrosion or on thermodynamic modeling or on low CO2 cements or on whatever. And uh, this could be an opportunity for, for Wylam to, to, to offer a platform for things like that. Anything to complete, Alexandra, which I have forgotten? No, <laughs> then that was it from our side. Thank you very much, Barbara and Alexandra. So we've, we are actually 18 minutes ahead of time. So we... We might finish early, but there is still uh, time for discussion if needed. So what I suggest is that uh, as in the schedule, I'll try to make a, make a list of conclusions. And then I will request Nicolas and Johan if, uh, if he wants to uh, give their comments and make the closure. So I've tried to bring together ideas that came from different groups. I'll, uh, as it was spoken, so I certainly would have missed a lot of things, but I'll just give these conclusions and certainly others can add on to them. I'll start with the values. I think it was very clear that it was emphasized that we uh, need values. We need scientific values. And I understand that it was, uh, people were comfortable with how Rylam was doing things. There was a lot of emphasis on societal values. And I heard society and the importance to society coming from many of, of the groups. And uh, uh, these societal values involve knowledge sharing. Uh, Rylam has always been proud that we give away information um, like our stars and recommendations and so on. So clearly the message is that we should continue doing. We should share information and we should create technology with impact. So this is something that we should always look at when we look at TCs, what is going to be the impact? Will, will there be an impact on society, uh, positive impact, obviously? 
and the other thing which came out uh, in terms of value is that we have to be the role model so i think we have done so many times but i think this has to continue that we have to be different and we are able to be different because of the way that we are set up so we can be role models we do not have to look at others all the time in turn for example giving away information reducing our membership fees so these are things which rilem has been role models and we should continue and it was very clear that diversity is important we heard uh, from other committees also the need for diversity diversity not being just gender but also the location the origin age maybe so we have to look at being as inclusive as possible to continue with the values related to the organization and membership the concept of family that we always talk about the rilem family was emphasized in terms of value so we need to think about everyone people uh, who are joining as young members and going on to retire as rilem members um, then uh, there was a lot of need for internal communication i think this came up in other uh, four uh, groups as well that sometimes we are doing things but we are not explaining properly enough so internal communication is very very important along with more and open access to knowledge i think this is something that we will have to discuss more when we look at the future of materials and structures the rilem technical letters is doing a great job by having complete open access we have to emphasize this more and again the talk on values centered on interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary this came again later when we said that we have to link up with other organizations so certain things we cannot do together by ourselves but we can link with other organizations we can build consensus in topics that we think is uh, is needed in terms of diversity i i like very much the emphasis that diversity with excellence we are not looking at quotas we are not looking at numbers but we have to now reach out to people who are excellent but not within the rilem family to make sure that there is diversity i think this is a very good thing that came about uh, there was an idea that we have to look at membership fees certainly that will uh, that will look at it they have been doing it and very recently as last year there was a revision of membership fees but we should look more whether anything should be tweaked to increase participation from africa americas and other in underrepresented uh, regions then i go on to the other operational aspects it was very good that there was positive feedback about the implementation manager and the process that we have followed so it looks like most members see a lot of positivity and expressed uh, the possibility that we look at continuing this role and the functions so that seems to have helped in our implementation of our strategic plan another aspect which came out in almost all the groups is the need to develop online content webinars and there was a tweak to this or a twist to this from the young members when they said they want peer to peer webinars as well sometimes it's top down as they said uh, senior members talking maybe the younger people are sort of afraid or uh, hesitant shy to talk they could be more of phd seminars young people talking and maybe some senior members to mentor the local language content again came from many groups the idea was recurring that we should emphasize we should promote events web content and discussions in the local language as you know we have regional groups and uh, in latin america we have given permission to latrilem to translate our documents to uh, spanish maybe we can also look at webinars or discussion groups in uh, local languages as well uh, the social media is again something that seems to have picked up this is we had a lot of discussion in the previous strategic meetings we seem to have done something well 
I think uh, there was a lot of appreciation with the social media. And I believe, and this came out very well, is the future of the social media would pass through our uh, Rylam Youth Council and young members. They will have to uh, take the lead. I'm looking at Juanita here, that uh, clearly the young people have to take a lead in terms of uh, social media. Now, in terms of the emphasis on meaning to uh, society and values, the other, other aspect which came up a lot was sustainability. Almost all the groups had something to say on it. So it is at the back of the mind of people along with the education. Educational content, improving educational content was emphasized a lot. And one interesting thing was whether we could have seminars online by TCs that could be recorded and could become online content. Because uh, I was there in the discussion when it was said that uh, we have TCs presenting in Rylam Weeks once in their lifetime. So can we have more uh, active or may, more volume of content made by the TCs? Again, we'll have to see. The TCs are all already busy, but we'll have to see if this can be done. And another thing which came out is instead of long information sessions, can they be information bursts? So I like this word of information bursts, where you can have short information uh, put out and maybe in a video, short enough to maybe be on Facebook or uh, sent around in social media. Similarly, in terms of the online content, uh, something that came out uh, several times is that we have learned during the pandemic that online events, online meetings work well, like we are having today. So there was actually a suggestion that TCs should be more online or hybrid so that more people can be involved. People don't have to worry about traveling, whereas the Rylam Week and the Rylam Convention would be in person. So the idea was to make our meetings more hybrid. When you have groups meeting to involve everyone, let's go online or hybrid, whereas our conferences and large workshops conference and workshops uh, and uh, seminars would continue to be uh, in person. In terms of sustainability and environmental impact, a uh, good idea was that can we take the lead and have workshops on topics such as environmental impact and bring together other organizations? Like we said before, some things we cannot do by ourselves alone, but can we take the lead? And it was emphasized that Rylam took should take the lead because of our values and because we stand for these things, we can have workshops and have other organizations also join in. For industry, there was a lot of good ideas and uh, like publicizing success stories. So this came about very well and we saw that the star in the nutshell has been appreciated. So the idea was, can we have more publicity for success stories and impact stories from the TCs. And maybe we'll have to provide some help uh, to, to get this done. In terms of TCs, there were several suggestions um, where industry could have give some feedback. There was a suggestion of an industry advisory board. I remember that we had discussed this earlier. Uh, we can look at it again. So the idea was that this industry advisory board could even look at TC proposals and not uh, do not have not have a role of approving them, but giving ideas and linking up. So this is something that we could have a group of people who would give feedback on TC proposals and emphasize the relev relevance and the possibility of impact on the uh, industry. And this was also related to a dedicated session. This after the Nanjing meeting, we had a discussion on having a dedicated session on the Rylam Week for industry. So this was also uh, brought up. In terms of young members, there were a lot of ideas, such as a question where the young members could start TCs. Certainly, I think TAC could look at the, the possibility of doing it. There was an interesting uh, idea of having virtual coffee rooms where you could have groups just chatting, run maybe by the Rylam Youth Council. Maybe they can uh, put together groups and we have we create an environment where young people 
and older people could also join. I see a very young potential Rylam member just joining from the Pro Provis Bernal household. And other things which came about through for the need to disseminate and the online tools, the Rylam app was recognized, but we, I think the feeling is that it could do much better. So uh, the Rylam app, and what was also interesting is a Rylam forum. So again, we'll have to see how we will moderate it and so on. And this could be linked to a question which came up, can we post information, like even funding? So a forum could do it, but maybe not on our website. So I think a forum, something like a blog, again, I would leave the young people to decide how it has to be done. But maybe a forum, moderated, of course, that we limit uh, the content that is to be put on. Searchability was emphasized. I think this is something we've been talking almost 10 years, that if you search for a Rylam document, we are not able to find it. And the searchability within the Rylam website and searchability of Rylam documents. I think certainly this is something that we have to uh, relook at. Similarly, nice suggestions for the website improvement, FAQs, maybe a job portal for young people, or it could be linked to a forum. We can look at search engine optimization. Certainly, this is something that uh, we have been looking at, but we have not done what we wanted to do uh, many, many years back. So a uh, lot of ideas have come. I think I've picked up most of the ones that stood out or were in common with different groups so that uh, we know that this is what members are looking at. Um, I'll, I'll stop there. This I've sort of run out of my notes. Um, I'll ask Johan to uh, give his thoughts, if any, and then I'll have uh, Nicolas have make the closure. Thank you, Ravindra. It was a, a very good uh, summary of all the reporters and also uh, from yourself, you, you did uh, really good to try to capture in a nutshell all the interesting things uh, which are out there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure if we have it all together, it will be an impressive um, um, collection of ideas. I'm, I'm really impressed also about the whole organization of the day. Uh, we started with uh, something like 120 people. We are still over 80 people uh, present. Um, it's, um, it's so easy if you are in uh, webinars to run away. So I'm, I'm really impressed that uh, we, we managed, you managed, uh, all of you managed in the sessions to uh, have, have the people sticking on and, and listening to, um, to what's um, living and what's going on. I think we all have the same feeling as Barbara. We, we're missing the dinner this evening. We're missing the, the dinner speech you would uh, give normally, uh, but we will catch up with that, uh, Ravindra. So I'm, uh, I, congratulations, nice work of all who has been in, involved and hardworking on making the day uh, happen. So, fantastic. Thank you very much, Johan. So, uh, Nicholas, just before I let you speak, I just wanted to show a slide since uh, Johan talked about this. We'd like to thank a lot of people who've helped us and we utilized our uh, young people well. So, there was a group of four people listed here, Rohit, Bipina, Vaishnav and Asha, who uh, helped Judith. Judith was certainly on top of the job and uh, she went through a lot of difficulties moving from one place to the other so that she could retain connectivity. Special thanks to everyone at the Rylam headquarters and these young people. And a special treat for Nongkululeko Radebe. Happy birthday. She, uh, she, was, she was the reporter and she is an RYC member. Thank you, Thank you. very much, Nongkululeko for being here on your birthday. I hope it was worth it and we didn't take away too much time from your birthday. It was worth it. It really was. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, now, Nicholas, the screen is all yours and uh, please go ahead. Well, thank you, Ravindra. Uh, and, and thanks to, to everyone, of course. Uh, I think I, I won't take too much, but uh, maybe as it is the, the last words, maybe I, I would take a bit of distance. Uh, I think you made a very uh, nice list, but long. We will have some work in the coming days. 
but I, I think I, I noted three three main things. Um, so the, the the first one is that uh, I have a feeling, and and that's the purpose of this meeting for 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 for, for most of us uh, yeah, in the standing committees. It, it's to measure the temperature, I mean, get an overall feeling of the wishes and the desires and where we're going. Of course, uh, RILEM is 1,400 members. We were 120, but uh, well, let's hope that statistically we were quite representative. So I have a feeling that there's, there's a shift. Uh, uh, in 2014, most of the discussion were very self-centered. So about how RILEM should work and how RILEM should be organized and how we should do things. I have, I have felt today a shift towards that our RILM should interact with the rest of the world. And it means of association, and we discuss social question, we discuss more industry, and it started already in 2014, but it fixed like today. Uh, it is one of the next thing we really need to do, find a balance between independence of an association that is very strongly academic, and the industry was always supporting us and is fully aware of the tomorrow's needs uh, in our community. So that's, uh, I think that there's a shift. It feels like Rylam is looking a bit outside, which is often a good sign because if you're looking outside, it means that inside is not doing too bad. So I think that's, that's a shift I noted. And I should note it as well. And I think that's already the first consequences of the increasing presence of young people in today's meeting is that there's a shift as well in what people do expect from the value of the membership itself. What, what do we get with a Ryland membership? So I've heard things today that I had never thought about before. I never heard about before. And probably these things, they don't belong exactly to my generation. And they come, of course, from a way of thinking that is new to me. But I think for us, it's very interesting because it gets, gives us access to things that we can't guess. So I think that's the thing we need to analyze. And, and of course, maybe we'll come back to you with more questions, probably. And um, I, I see one limit, uh, I mean, divided into two parts, but I see to one limit to some of the proposals is that RILEM is a bottom-up approach. Uh, so it means that some of the proposal, I had the feeling that they could exist, they could be done, but only if we don't, we are not the only one wanting it. It means that all members must want that because it will require more work for members. And RILEM is a voluntary based association. So it means that if we want TCs to provide more of this and more videos or more of that, it means that collectively, we all want to increase our working time for RILEM. So for me, that, that's the limit. I mean, if we, we, maybe it can work on some aspects, but some other aspects will be bounded by the fact that we need to work more, which comes to at the end of the day to a, a question that for me is key and, and, and is a very, uh, and was really enlightened and then focused on today. How do we implement things? Of course, RILEM members can work a bit more. We all love RILEM, but how do we implement things? So for me, one of the key discussion that will come out about many ideas is that what, how do we deal with the, uh, uh, after the implementation manager, uh, should it should we keep having an implementation manager? So for me, it is a key question that comes up in many suggestions today. And then there is a last, and that would be my last uh, my last comment. There is a last categories of item that sh that that appeared today, but they appear as well last time, is what I call the difficult questions. Difficult questions are questions that are at the boundary between two conflicting values or goals of Ryan's. So for example, promote diversity, or for example, gender equality, promote excellence. It means that if we say we create a, a medal, an award specifically for female researchers, then some female researchers object that they would prefer to get an award that everyone can get because they want to compete with everyone. And this is just a, a, an example. And often when we are facing difficult questions, it's because we are facing a conflict between two very strong pillars of RILEM, independence and, of course, involving industry. Or, uh, I don't know, local language reaching everyone and having documents that are accessible to everyone, but local language by definitions are local, so they're not easy to read. So all these questions are tricky because they are uh, being at the boundary and in the conflict between two very important things to us. 
So it means that these things will have to be discussed and we will have to adopt a collective position on this. It won't be uh, black or white, it will be gray. But, uh, and maybe we'll come back to you to, to say which level of gray, not shade of gray, but which level of gray uh, you, 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 would, uh, you would like. Uh, but I think these are some very interesting questions because the answer is not obvious. But I have the feeling that many of the items that were discussed today were exactly this type of difficult questions we will have to face and answer in the future. So that will be all for me. It was a very interesting day. Uh, I hope your session was as good as mine. And, and once again, I thank everyone, the supporting team in India and, uh, and the huge effort by the, the Secretariat to organize uh, this, uh, this uh, big thing uh, in the conditions that uh, we have uh, right now uh, on this planet. So thanks. And Ravindra, you want me to really close everything officially? Yes, yes. You all right, all right. So, uh, so first I will, uh, uh, of course, suggest that you very much take care of yourself, your family and your close ones. Uh, this is very important these days, as you all know. Uh, and, and the rest of the time uh, that uh, you enjoy uh, science, research, your work, so that next time we meet, we have many new discoveries and uh, cool results to share. So with this, I will, uh, Wish you a nice day, a nice evening, or, or good night, whatever, uh, wherever you are. And uh, I hope we'll be able to talk soon. And I'm looking forward to our next meeting.